Hi, I'm Irene Cho from the Fuller Youth Institute. I am the program manager of the Urban Youth Ministry resources and content um, that we provide to urban youth leaders all across the country. I'm excited to be here with you at this time to share the research that we've discovered at the Fuller Youth Institute that we believe is extremely applicable to all urban leaders and youth leaders around the country. Um, and that's the research that we have discovered basically that one in two students drift away from the church and from their faith once they leave youth group and enter into adulthood or go off to college. And that number for us is um, shocking and really discouraging. And so we've asked the question, what do we do about that? And where does the church, what, how does the church participate in that? What is the role of the church in all of it? And so we have been embarking on research for the last 10 years, first with the Sticky Faith research in which we really looked at the students who stayed connected into the church and what it was about their churches that kept them connected to their faith journey, to their church, to walking with the Lord. Um, and then the second research that we did is what we call our growing young research, which was really examining church structures and systems and asking what churches are growing young, are engaging with young people in ways that um, kind of surpass what we're discovering in the research and what are churches doing that are really helping young people stay connected as they're entering into adulthood and into emerging leadership. So from that, we have had six core commitments of which we have discovered. And in order to find out more, please do go to the website at fulleryouthinstitute.org, Growing Young, and you'll find out a whole bunch of material and resources that really talk about churches that are doing amazing things to engage with young people. But today in this talk, I want to talk to you about one of the core commitments that really, um, for me, is key and central to helping us as a church body, as a body of believers, continually helping young people stay connected to God as they walk through this thing called life. And that core commitment is what we call warmth. We have this catchphrase where we say warm is the new cool. And in that way, we are really asking the question, how are we as leaders creating an environment that is warm for young people? The young people that we researched and we surveyed and we interacted with, um, we did case studies with and really deeply asked challenging questions with of what is it about your church that is engaging, that is involving you, that is reaching out to you, that is helping you stay connected. And warmth was one of the number one key factors. And what do we mean by warmth? We don't mean that a fireplace, hot temperatures, that only you know, places in Los Angeles and Miami are, places, are churches that are connecting with young people. What we mean is that the churches that are engaging with young people are creating environments that are safe. In the Sticky Faith research, the research previous to Growing Young, we discovered that doubt and the inability or unallowance to doubt in the church as they were journeying and questioning and asking these big questions about life, the inability to, for church to be a safe space for young people was one of the key factors that young people, when they left, was like, this is not the place for me. And that's heartbreaking because the church should be the number one safe space for young people to come and ask these strange questions and ask these difficult questions about life. Death, what does it mean if I sin? What does it mean if I've messed up so bad that I don't think God can forgive me? What about suicide? What about my friends who aren't Christians? What about if my parents um, are, are abusing me and I am so angry at God? What about all of these emotions and doubts and questions and unstability? and uncertainty that I have? What, what if I don't believe God's going to show up? All these questions that young people have that are locked in their minds and they need a place to just be able to process. And the churches that created a warm environment for young people to come and dialogue about these things were the churches that they said they felt were really stepping across the aisle, were stepping across and reaching and saying, we are a place, a safe haven for you. Now, what does this mean for urban youth leaders? What are the practical applications that we really believe in, that I have seen change the way that I have been effective with young people? 
is being warm means asking better questions. Leaders, you and I, we, we're so prone to provide answers. And I did a lot of that in my earlier parts of my ministry. I was so excited when young people would come and ask me questions and I would say, oh, I know the answer to this. But I discovered later on in my ministry, the more effective tactic, if you want to say, is, that, is when I asked better questions. And so it's not to say I don't provide answers, but I'm actually providing answers in the questions that I'm asking. So when a young person comes to me and asks, okay, what about the gay issue? Am I going to hell if I commit suicide? What about my friends who committed murder and then they got shot and now they're dead? Are they in heaven? What about their relationship with God? What does all of this mean? When we hear these questions, we want to come to the rescue a lot of times, us as leaders. We want to soothe their pain. We want to offer them condolence and, and some consolence in, in this doubt. But the answers are not actually what students are needing because we don't want to create robots who are regurgitating what is correct. What we need to do as leaders is create an environment in which we begin to welcome these questions that they have and say, those are great questions. Let's journey through this together. I have the same questions. Here's where maybe some of what I'm thinking, let's find out what other people are saying about this. Let's discover through this together. Turn it around and ask young people, what do you think? Well, what do you think? you know, as you're dealing with these questions that you have, what is your take on how you think God would show up in these spaces? What do you believe, you know, is happening with your friend or the situation that you're involved in? What have you been told by society or your school or your friends around you or other leaders who you interact with? Let the students unpack it with you and ask more questions so that they can journey with you through this. I have discovered by only providing answers and letting them regurgitate what I consider the right answer doesn't actually create deep transformative change in young people. And they don't want that. It might be really an easy band-aid initially and they're like, oh, my pastor is so smart. He or she knows all the answers. But in actuality, when they leave to go into the world to interact, they don't have that answer completely grounded in solid soil. And that's what we want because they're not going to be with us all the time. They're going to move. They're going to change neighborhoods, change communities, get new jobs. All these things are going to happen in what we call adulthood in this journey of life. And so our job as leaders, as we create this warm environment, is not to provide answers in these warm environments. It is to provide a warm environment so that they can bring their questions and we can ask more questions of them so that they can discover the answers as we journey with them together. I want to refer to Romans 2.4. It's one of my favorite passages um, in which Paul really challenges us that it is the Lord's kindness that leads us to repentance. And I think of that all the time, that sometimes we think providing rules, providing parameters, providing answers, which makes us as leaders feel better, is the right way to go, is the thing that's going to help rescue young people and help engage with young people. But in actuality, a lot of times what we need to do is adopt the method that Jesus took on, which is to answer an, a close-ended question with an open-ended question. And it was in infuriating to the disciples. It was infuriating to the people who were trying to trap him. It was infuriating to the people all around that he interacted with because sometimes the, the frustration is, oh, just provide the answer and I can move on my merry little way. But Jesus always elevated the conversation. He always put the challenge and the journey on the people. And that's why he answered questions with open-ended questions. And there would be dialogue that happened and it was about journey through these struggles and doubts together. So urban leaders, let's together create an environment that is engaging young people in amazing, powerful, and transformative ways by creating a warm environment and doing that by asking deeper questions, challenging questions, um, insightful questions, so that young people, as they continue journeying in their faith with the Lord, they wouldn't find answers from you, but they would be knowing that they would have a partnership and journeying together in this.